Ladies and gentlemen that's listening to Grade A Scouting Podcast, I want to give a welcome applause to Chuck Harry for winning the Player of the Week for the Tri-County area. I consider the Tri-County, Sumter, Kershaw, and Lee. Okay? So he won that for being the best player, performing player this week. Okay? We got to give a big shout out. You know, he won it. He voted the most valuable player. We give him a shout out. All right, just to let him know that, you know, keep going. Your motivation inspire your determination to be seen. Keep it going. That's all I have to say on the subject matter. I just want to give a good a round of applause. Um, thank you for checking in to Grade A's Scouting Podcast. Until the next time. Welcome to Grade A Scouting Report. I'm your host, Jamie Martin. Today, ladies and gentlemen, scouts and football fanatics, welcome to another thrilling episode of Grade A Scouting Podcast. And today, we've got a showdown you won't want to miss. It's the Thursday report as the Crestwood Knights go head-to-head with the summer Sumter Gamecocks in the ultimate crosstown rivalry. Let's kick things off by shining the spotlight on the Crestwood Knights, the visiting team that's determined to make a statement in this game. They got some standout players you should keep an eye on. Let's kick things off by talking about the quarterback. We have the young gun, Javion the Cannon Martin. This guy has been making ways with his precision passing and ability to read the offense like a seasoned veteran. He's got a rocket for an arm, and his accuracy is the second to none. Crestwood Knights are definitely putting their hopes on his shoulders tomorrow night. For his stats, he's a 6'2", 180-pound senior. He's thrown for 810 yards so far, seven touchdowns and one interception with a 61% completion rate. But that's over half of his throws he's connecting. So that's your precision right there. Now his backfield mate, we have the elusive running back, Arzavion, Arzarion, the bruiser, Yates. He's got speed, power, and agility that leaves defenders shell shock. If the Knights wants to keep the Gamecocks on their toes, They'll be handing the ball off to Azarian quite a bit. So far this season in three games, he has 272 yards. That's a 90 yards per average and eight touchdowns. His longest run this year was an 85-yard touchdown. So you see the speed and you see the burst just by the numbers alone. And and he's a bruiser too, breaking tackles. So we're going to give it up and moving on. And what is a quarterback without a top-notch target? Into wide receiver, Jeremy the X-Factor Richardson. Got hand like glue and can turn any catch into a highlight reel play. The Gamecock secondary better be ready to face off against this dynamic trio of Javion, Arzarian, and Jeremy on offense. Now, on the other side of the ball, I'm going to highlight that the defensive end for the night has a force. His name is Javion the Wall Lammy. He's a quarterback's nightmare. He's relentless, pressure in the pocket, and making it nearly impossible for opposing quarterbacks to find their rhythm. Crestwood coaching staff don't have his his total stats down. To be honest with you, they don't have the stats down for none of the defensive side. Now, everybody wants to be recognized now, coaches. So it's your job, oh, your job to help expose these kids to to everybody else. Cause sometimes they can't catch the game, but they can look at the numbers. You know what I'm saying numbers don't lie, tape don't lie. So they just want to be recognized too. If you put all the effort on offense, you can do the same thing for the defense. 
I'm just saying. If you want to have a well ran program, if you don't want jealousy to set in, you got to do the same for the offense and the defense. See, they can't know that there is a upper echelon or something. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got to be toe and heel. All right. That's that, you know. I don't mean to get our subject. And now let's turn our attention to the home team, the something, the Gamecocks. They've got their own set of standout players ready to defend their turf. The Gamecocks are no, are no pushover. They've got some star players of their own, starting with the running back, John, the Tornado Peoples. Peoples. The Tornado is known for his elusive moves and breakaway speed. He's a threat to score from anywhere on the field. In three games, he has 10 rushing touchdowns and one passing touchdown. He rushed for 266 yards. That's like 88 yards to carry. His longest run this year is 65 yards. So that's that's going to be that's that's going to be good. He's elusive. 10 rushing touchdowns already, so he can find the end zone. All right, let's move on. On the outside, their wide receiver Dazon the speedster Jackson, true to his name. Deshaun, Deshaun is a speed demon on the field. He can leave defenders in the dust, and he's always a deep threat that the Gamecocks can rely on. He averaged 80 yards a game. He already has two touchdowns. He's also the place, the field goal holder, kicker holder. So he got hands. <laughs> he got hands. He's a field goal kicker holder and a wide receiver. Now, you know you don't see too many wide receivers holding field goals. But anyway, on the defensive side, this is where I think Sumter is would be more efficient on. The defensive line, we got a, a defensive end, Anthony Juggernaut Addison. Yo, he pops when you look at the film. He's constantly pushing his um, offensive tackle in the backfield. Constantly slipping gaps into the backfield. This man is a beast, plain and simple. He be looking to disrupt the Knights' offense at every turn and make life difficult for Javion Martin. Already, Anthony, he's a 6'4", 215-pound DN. He has 16 total tackles, 7 solos, and 3 tackles for loss in 3 games. But when you watch his film, quick, he got a quick, he's off that line. When that ball hike, he's, he's damn near in the backfield. That's quick. You can't teach that. I'm saying that, that's in you right there. That's in you. And, and on the next level of the defense, we can't forget about Tamarius the shadow Thompson Durant. He's not one of the best linebackers in the league. He's one of the best, period. His ability to read plays and make game-changing tackles is second to none. He has, in three games, his position is outside linebacker. In three games, he has 24 tackles, 10 solos. That's like eight tackles per game, give or take. So, some of the defense have four guys with over 20 tackles. Four guys over 20 tackles in three games. See, that defense is balanced. They tackle. And... That's just something you can't you can't teach. Guys are D, they 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 dogs. Something you can't teach. All right, the Sumter Gamecocks offense. They have 549 rushing yards for a team. They have 603 yards passing. Their quarterback that's 200 yards a game, right? They've scored 145 points in three games. That's 48 points a game, right? Now, their defense has only allowed 42 points in three games. That's like 14 points a game. And like I say, they got four guys with 20 or more tackles. Okay? And we're going to move to Crestwood's side. This is just the tail of the tapes right here. Crestwood, strong side of the ball is their offense. Their passing is for 895 yards. With eight touchdowns, they're rushing 467 yards with 12 touchdowns. Wow, that's some good. That's some good offensive numbers. They scored 158 points 
in three games, like 53 points a game. They had a barn burner when they went with Gray, lost 62 to 60. So that's a very good offense. That is a very good offense. That is a very good offense. And, and Jeremy Richardson, he's averaging over 125 yards a game. His longest catch is 85 yards. So when I tell you now that offense is serious, if their offensive line can keep something's defensive line out of the backfield, it would be a very entertaining game. And on the flip side, what I'm reading here is the defense for Sumter, because they offense is not putting up staggering numbers. You know why? Because they're not giving them long drives. Their defense is causing teams to punt, and when you cause team to punt, that means you have short, short field to work on. So that's what I'm seeing is that defense. It is the defense, but this is a top-notch offense. So as the sun set over something tomorrow, these players are ready to give it. They're all in this cross-town rivalry. The stakes are high. Trash talking is, an, is inevitable. It's a must. And you got bragging rights for a year. Well, at least until you play me basketball. So I know the crowd going to be electric. And let the kids have fun. Let the kids show y'all and prove it to y'all. Because these games like this, you know what I'm saying, it gets the guys going. You know what I'm saying? It helps the community as well, the schools as well. And you can give guys another avenue, you know, okay? So everyone should pack this out. I'll be there. Everyone should pack this out. Should be a pack house. Who will come out on top? Will it be?